Hello everyone, my name is Jamie, this is Mitch. We're headed down to Sydney to visit Punch Love Boxing. One of our most successful accounts of all time, definitely an outlier, definitely a Yukon. Since September 13th last year, we sold over 242 paid clients into their gym. They converted 203 clients into a full paid member. 12 months, 75 bucks a week, over $15,000 in the direct debit over $790,000 annually. Yeah. Mitch, what are the three biggest takeaways you've noticed working with just legendary owner operators like Nick and Karina and the Punch Love brand? The brand is obviously really strong because the amount of leads that we're actually generating isn't enormous, but we are getting such a high conversion on those leads. So our lead to sale percentage is really high, which means that when people are opting in, they're doing a bit of their own research, a bit of their own homework, looking on their website, looking on their socials and really liking what they're seeing and then wanting to have a call to, to discuss the program with us about about them. So that that's yeah. probably the first It's really thing. interesting, right? Because the lead cost is $17.39 and our average lead cross across Australia for 2,000 leads a week is under $10. Don't get me wrong, lead cost is super important, but if you are in an area in Sydney where lead cost is a little bit higher, as Mitch referenced, the branding is that much more important. So I think they say in a 28 day beginner boxing, they click learn more. Before they opt in, before they book in a phone call, they are going to your Instagram, they are going to your Facebook, they are going to your Google reviews, they are going to your website and really looking into you in a lot more detail. The same way before you guys work with me and Mitch, I encourage you, look at our Instagram page, look at our Facebook page, look at our results, look at our testimonials. And then from even for me, bringing gyms into our service makes my job a lot easier, the same way it makes our sales jobs a lot easier. Now don't get me wrong, our sales team are a bunch of killers. If they don't close them, no one can close them. I train them personally, Mitch trains them personally. We review calls and they might do the most amount of fitness sales calls in Australia, our fitness sales group is the most tested in Australia, but even for us, Mitch, we are trying to make our sales team job as easy as possible and marketing and brand over sales. As much as I hate to say it because I love sales, marketing and brand is more important. People just wanting what Punch Love are providing. <laughs> it's, a, it's a female only boxing studio and not, not here to say that you need to be female only boxing studio, but it is something that is quite niche and is in demand and combined with a really strong brand, great social media, nice website, good reputation in, in town too. Obviously they're having a lot of positive word of mouth because they aren't, um, aren't really doing anything wrong by the consumers because they run a really good show. So that's the first thing. The second thing which I thought of when you asked me then was just their onboarding system. They have a dedicated team member who takes care of all of these new people that we are sending through. They have an initial technique session that they get started with and then they transition into the program from there. So it's in terms of communication, this team member is all over it. In terms of that first visit, it is quite uh, personalized, you know, whether it be in like a one-on-one -on -one or a small group. So they get a really nice introduction to the facility, into the program. And then thirdly, I think just that follow-up throughout that 28 days. Oh, good... man, it's so critical. Yeah. We, we have a laugh about, yeah, I reach out to them and like, if they don't make in, not good enough. Yeah. So they've got a yeah, really, really complete process throughout that introductory period and then a really sound sales process to convert them into members. One of my favorite things about Punch Love too is they ask questions. So if you work with us, you're inside a Slack channel, you have your own private channel. We send through clients name, phone number, email as well as notes with what happened on the phone call as well as their car details so you don't have to ask for it again but we're communicating back and forth back and forth all the time this person this person this timetable change can you do this can you not do that and for this relationship to be so beneficial and to be the absolute win 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 like we want to become almost is partner the wrong word, mate? We want to partner in your facility to, we'll take care of the acquisition, what we do best, but then it's all dependent on you doing what you do best. And the thing is, if you own a gym owner, more often than not, you have gone through an amazing transformation and you want to provide that for others. I think, I could be wrong, I think Nick and Karina, I think one of them, I'll double check today, 
lost over 50 kilos. Yeah, I'm not sure. And her story yeah. is so powerful and it resonates so well. One of our trainers, Steve, has lost 40 kilos. So he has walked a day in their life. So, mate, outside of amazing brand, great website, great Instagram, great Facebook, great onboarding, any other things that you can pinpoint of why this has been such a such a successful account for, for, for both parties? Like I, I alluded to it earlier, but just what they're actually offering, <laughs> like it is, it is slightly different. Yeah. And if you market to everyone, you market to no one. So I think what they've really been able to capitalize on is just the female market and then a niche within that in boxing. Yep. So I think in today's saturated market of fitness that has proven in this situation to be really promising. Not to say that you can't run a really great studio and get new clients and everything if you've just got a uh, you know a normal program for men and women, and that, that's what we have up you know with our our studios in Newcastle. But it's something that is a little bit different, and I think that that would probably capture the attention of some of the ladies who are who are seeing the ads, but. It's it's it comes from the top. Nick and Karina, they they're great owners. They've got a big team of what seventeen, twenty or something. It's a, it's a lot, yeah. Like close to twenty. So they they are obviously leading from the top and and, and have a lot of a lot of great structure in place underneath them to ensure that it all works. And they're they're not doing anything really on the day to day outside of leading the team yeah. and coordinating the you know the whole the whole lo- the whole program the whole location. It's really interesting, right? Because when you're in the gym. You can't see the forest through the trees. And if you're marketing, you're getting leads, but leads aren't picking up the phone, you're not getting bookings, you're not getting sales, it goes back to what you said at the start. Do they want what you have? And maybe maybe you do have what they want, but you're presenting it in the wrong light. You're not running the right campaign, the right ad, the right sales funnel, the right conversion mechanism. And your favorite thing, mate, on brand, on brand, Nick and Crane, to their credit, have gotten out of their out of our way and said, hey guys, do what you do best. We work with owners, mate. I know it frustrates both of us where even when we're getting leads, getting results, getting sales, there's been one recently, 59 clients the last month we sold into this gym, and she said, oh, I don't like the way the ads look. And she, the ad isn't the brand. The color of the ad isn't the brand. The font isn't the brand. Your brand is getting people into your gym having an amazing experience. You know what happens then? Referrals. Do you want to expand on that, mate? Yeah, well, the whole idea of a lead, lead generation ad is just to get interest with someone's name, phone number, and email, so then we can begin the sales process. And just because that ad that they click through on isn't on brand, it's not the exact photo they, they want, it's not perhaps the, the exact font they want or, or the exact wording in the ad, it doesn't mean that people aren't clicking through on the ad and, and quite quite often people people won't even remember ten minutes later what the ad looked like. So that is a that is a way to generate the interest initially and, and that's what we do really well. Like we are able to capture people's interest and attention to get them to opt into to ads. It's interesting you say that, right? Because there, there's an owner in Perth, Paul, shout out, you're a legend, mate. He does a twenty eight day challenge and he sells straight to a six month membership. And they forget the ad. We work with a Pilates studio who, who wants to do 90 days, but the ad still says 28. So the ad isn't the ad is designed to, to get their name, phone number, and email, to get them to click and take that next action, not your brand. Right? So I think we'll leave it there. Uh, we're heading down to Sydney. We're, we're gonna meet the girls, have lunch, looking at expanding, and we'll talk to you later. And we're back, just got fuel. So it was really interesting. The other night we were at our, our gym's function. Uh, it was at a bowling club, it was lots of fun. Yeah, good time. And there was a member there, she will re- remain nameless. Now, what we found so interesting about this member, who's been with us for years and years and years, in one sentence, she perfectly explained why people join gyms and why they don't join gyms. And I think it almost makes the ads that we run so perfect because it would identify to her exactly for what she said. Mate, do you want to expand on that and just say the exact sentence she said to you? She's and a, both our jaws hit the fucking floor. She's a, she's a business genius. Go speak up, mate. She, she, she's a business genius. Um, I can't remember it word for word, but it was something along the lines of, at different points in life, you are into exercise, 
or sometimes you're not. There's other times when you're, you may be into cycling or into running or into Pilates or into boxing. It really just is the ups and downs of adulthood. And it just, again, I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, but effectively what she meant, she, she's in her mid forties. She's got a couple of kids, married, a very, very normal, normal life. And she was just saying like, at this point in my life, I'm exercising and it's great. But for a long time, I didn't. And there was times in my younger years when, when I was into it. And there was times when I wasn't. And she's been on this journey up and down for 25 yeah, or 30 years. Starting and stopping for 25 to 30 years. I remember, I remember signing her up all those years ago. And I, I did the sales call. And it was about two weeks before Australia Day. And she had a holiday on. And she's oh, can I start after the holidays? No, you can't. You're starting right now, two weeks before, two weeks after. But the starting and stopping, the ebbs and flows, is the reason why you cannot solve your churn problem. It isn't even a churn problem. It is a human nature problem. It is just the nature of what happens when you run a fitness business, which is why both Mitch and I are so passionate about acquisition. Because you can improve retention, you can improve churn, but logistically, people are always going to cancel. Now, the other day, I saw an ad from a fitness business coach, guru, mentor, and they were blatantly having a shot at Mitch's beautiful text banner ads. May outraged. as well put our fucking names in the ad next time. I was time. outraged. He was outraged. I was outraged too, <laughs> even though they all copy him. But what was so funny is I saw that ad that was pretty much shitting on our ads, and then I thought about that member and exactly what she said, going through adulthood, you have the ebbs and flows, sometimes you're training, sometimes you're not, sometimes you try Pilates, sometimes you try boxing, and I'm just in a season of exercising at the moment. And then our ads, 28 day beginner boxing challenge for Punch Love in particular. Have you had three months of exercise? Do you feel like you're starting from scratch? Perhaps our, three, our 28 day beginner boxing challenge may be for you. Now put yourself in that lady's shoes, 45 years old, stopping, starting, stopping, starting. This ad pops up. She has had three months of exercise. She is starting from scratch. And as she said, mate, it might be for her at this current point in her life. I think, I think people are just, every gym owner who are probably the only people listening to this would have countless, countless stories of members that they left, that, that left their, their business, that cancelled, they went to another gym, they tried something else, they needed a break for family reasons, you know, they, they took a new job, didn't have the, the time. Obviously we can say some feel like some of them are bullshit, some of them are legitimate. But there are different periods in life where people are pursuing something else. Whether it is a different style of exercise, whether it is that they don't have as much time because they've just taken a new job and there's an extra hour of commuting each day. Maybe they are spending more time with their kids because they're playing a high level sport or they need to take them to the tutoring after school. Maybe their partner has got a new got a new role and then they're needing to do more with their kids. But the, the, the list is actually endless as to why people stop. Not to mention gym members, people with fitness, it's frugal. They're, they're, they're frugal. They, they will be looking at the, the next thing, the new thing, the new gym that opens, the new thing that their friend's been telling them about, the, the new concept or the new franchise that comes in yeah. town. It's almost a lie that you can never lose a customer again. No, it, it is a lie. So I got engaged in 2023 last year. It was January. I had members at that engagement party that no longer come to our gym and they're going to a big franchise down the road. Now, my younger Jamie, a Jamie with more hair, a more angry Jamie, that's definitely fair to say, a more hot emotionally tempered. unstable, hot-tempered Jamie that didn't deal with cancellations very well, that occurring would have ruined my fucking week. I would have been on the phone to Mitch, pissing and moaning about it, the same way we have clients that are pissing and moaning to us about clients leaving. And we say the same thing every time, like, 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 it's not the issue, it's not the problem. How many gyms do you find that actually have like a, a really bad retention problem? Especially when they've got under 100 members, you haven't got a retention problem. And there, there are instances where you can Im improve your retention if, if you're not contacting your members, if they're being inactive, if you're not doing any sort of events or, or you, you're not posting in your social media group or you're not reaching out to, to people. like. 
there are things that you can steps that you can take to improve that. But my, my opinion is, for the, for the most part, it's inevitable. Pe- people are going to leave, whether it is purely logistical because something outside of their their fitness world changes, i.e., they move, get a new job, circumstances change for their kids, their family, or Lord forbid. They just want to try something different. That's it too, right? Like they actually just want to try something different. Some members have been with us for years and years and years and years and years. I don't blame them for wanting to try a new concept. I've dabbled between doing functional and doing more cardio and doing the typical bodybuilding bro split. It is the nature of it. Therefore, if you own a fitness business, just like Punch Love, you need to get used to acquiring clients. So many owners I talk to, mate, on calls that, that work before us, like, oh, do you run, run many ads? They're like, oh yeah, like like a couple of times a year. No, no, 48 weeks a year. <laughs> like They are off around Easter and Christmas and that's about it because you can not stop people canceling. The perfect gym, mate, you'd say, what, three to five people starting every week. That's a good number of people to onboard. Every, every four weeks, you'd have 15, 16 new clients. Say you lose, eight to 10 of your OGs, it's gonna break your heart at the time. A lot easier to digest if you've got 16 new people starting, paying at a higher price. And, and even for me, mate, like, this isn't easy, by the way, like, with, with this hard. How long, how many years into the journey until you stopped giving a fuck about cancellations? Is it like, I guess, taking them personally? Long time, that's a long, I, <laughs> like, so, do you want, do, a long July time. 27, 2015, up until, what do you well, even, even now, like, I'm, we're still involved, right? So I, I still, I still would, like I still, part of me is still like, that's upsetting that they're leaving. Like partly because obviously financially, but also because you form connections with people. Like I totally, totally get it. But I also understand that it's completely part of business. And this is, it's actually like a point that I really want to drive home for people because some of the owners we work with, like, and, and us included, like we're, we're we're pretty, we're under the belief that people should be in your business because they're in the best hands there. We feel like we've got the best community, we've got good programming, good support. Hang on, mate. So other gyms think they have a better community than ours. No, ours is the best. Ours is the best. But everyone thinks theirs is the best, and, and, and as you should, like you, you really should. But if, if a member comes to you and legitimately says, hi hey Mitch, I'm wanting to try Reformer Pilates because my sister and my friend are doing it and I'm gonna go with them three mornings a week at six o'clock in the morning. It's a great opportunity for me to see more of my sister and to see more of my friend because we don't get to catch up really that much. Plus something different will be good on my joints, it's low impact and, and really just give me a chance to continue exercising which you've really helped me create routine around. Unfortunately, I'm gonna be leaving I'll leave you a review, like it's been great here, but it's time to move on. How could I, how could I as a human being get upset at that truly? Like, no, like you cannot, <laughs> you cannot, yeah. like you Don't cannot. go through the attendance report, don't bring up the no-show report, don't say they came to the last community event. It is human nature to want to try new things. And, and obviously there are some people that have smokes, that they, they throw smoke screens at you and there's a bunch of bullshit. But if someone's legitimately saying that, I'm saying, what a great idea. <laughs> because if my partner or, or a friend of mine or anyone said that to me, I, I, w- I would say, yeah, of, of course you should do that. Like, like what, what, what a brilliant idea. You get to exercise. You, you get to spend more time with, with your sister and your friend. Like, of course you should do that. Like, yeah. I think we are, obviously we, we're biased and we know when, when finances come into it and there's stresses that that come with cancellation and and all of that, I totally understand. But if we're looking just purely at that decision and why they're doing it, then that is very legitimate and that is fair and that's gonna be a cancellation that month and there's nothing you can say or do about it for that to change. Mm -hmm. And you need to get a new member to to replace that person, otherwise you're, you're going backwards. And I think when it's really painful is when you have an OG member that leaves that you really care about, they may have been to your house, they've been to your, your Christmas parties, your, your community events. Hell, members came to my engagement party that have cancelled. It really stings if you don't know where your next member is coming from or you haven't got a consistent and predictable acquisition system. 
And that's why we don't really talk about retention and churn that much because again, if you've got, over a, if you've got under 100 members, five members will leave a month through like logistical reasons. Like, and five's good. It, we, we've had, like, this sounds terrible. We've had members die. Like members get pregnant, members members move move the area, members partners lose their jobs, members get really injured. Like just shit happens. And while your gym is the center of the universe for you, it's not the center of the universe for everyone else. And if you are losing five out of hundred a month, like that is that is good. Yeah, like, no. that is five percent. Like that that is not the bottleneck. That that is great. Like if if you're losing fifteen. Maybe it's something to look at, but again, every every area is different as well. You might be in, in an area that is very transient, so that that's that's also that's also fine. Yeah. If 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 you truly want to look at it, look through all your cancellations and and legitimately write a reason why they're cancelling. And if and if most of them are are because of reasons out of your control, then let it be. It just means that you need to get more more members on the other end. And like Jamie said, we don't talk about it that much because we, we truly don't feel like it's a problem for most of the gyms we work with. Like if, yeah. if, if you are like a, a big a big Anytime Fitness that has a thousand or you know, any 24-7 gyms got thousands of members and you're losing hundreds a month, then yeah, yeah. okay, like there, there is yeah. obviously some retention work to be done yeah. there. But the people we work with, they've got yeah. 30, 40, 50, 75, 100 members at, at the most. Yeah, and the so amount of members, the gym owners I talk to, yeah, our community is the best. I know their names, their kids' names, their dogs' names. We hang out on the weekend. Like, like I, I, I agree and, and I believe you and, and I'm sure it is a fantastic outlet for those people. But again, like it's almost, I think also too, it's, it's just the painful reality that you run a business that constantly requires marketing and sales. And the majority of people got into this business not expecting that. And I think when we were a bit different, we had experience in big box, big box clubs and like a few all over Australia and some in Canada. We had the same thought in 2012 when we first entered the industry. And then by the time we opened up our first location in 2015, we knew what we we're getting into. We knew it was acquisition first, sessions next. It's almost a, it's interesting, mate, when we, when we open up locations, the type of training never really came into it. All the equipment that we had, it was like, hey, can we make this location work? And what I mean by that is like, can we fit 20 people in a room and acquire clients in this area? Yeah, because if, if you don't have enough people coming in, you don't have a viable business, you don't have a profitable business, then what you're doing in there like really doesn't matter. And, and, and even now, like 2024, like June 2024, Although there are a lot of gyms shutting down, there has never been more competition. So it, it, it is actually just this ongoing battle and this ongoing struggle of losing members, acquiring new, month, new ones, losing members, acquiring new ones. You are always going to lose members. There, there is no, nothing that you can do to stop cancellations. Yes, you can limit them somewhat, but you are never going to have a 0% churn rate. Yeah, we're going back to Punch Love. I could be wrong on making this number up here, but their lifetime value was ridiculous. It was like 26 months or 28 months, something astronomical due to the amazing service offer that they have. Your lifetime value is in 28 months and they still need members. We sold 242 people into their gym. So even if you have the world's best retention, new members still pay the bills so we're about halfway to sydney Mate, anything else just to, to, to say about that that member who <laughs> perfectly in one sentence said why people leave and why our ads convert really well I, th I think it's just i think the important thing to that we realize and, and for anyone watching this probably experiences it too is you've got a personal relationship so although although it is a financial change when someone cancels it is also like you're, you're effectively losing a friend. Yeah, and that, 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 if, if they, and that if, if, if they see you at Coles, they will walk in the other direction. And and that and that's I don't think anyone realizes that when when you when you sign up to this, i.e. gym gym ownership, we certainly didn't. And and it can be just that that relationship that that gets lost because of it was predicated on the fact that they were coming into the gym. And and not to say you have hard feelings like if you see him out, you say hello, and that's fine. But there is obviously that personal connection that you have, which can be hard to let go of. 
combined with if you are struggling financially and you think, shit, like I've just lost this member to paying $60 a week, like that's $60 out of my pocket that I'm not getting every week. And if you're unable to, to replace them, then that's when you, when you can be stressed and you can run into... I'll expand on that thing too about the friendship thing, mate. We got and straight here. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Sorry. <Don't laughs> I'm not sure where we're going. Yeah, go, uh, go the tunnel. Straight. Uh, North Connects. We're on the way to the Hills District. So straight, right? Uh, yeah, 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 straight. Uh, I'll expand on what Mitch said before about like just you losing a friend. It's also the exact reason why it's hard to increase your prices when you should and you know you should because they're your friends. Um, pricing is a really interesting one, mate, because it's, it's, it's a discussion I have all the time. And there's a lot of fear around increasing prices. And I say the same thing to every person. State the facts, tell the truth. My rent's gone up. My wages have gone up. Inflation has gone up. We need to increase your prices for X, Y, Z reason for this business to be viable. And 97% of your members, like absolutely no fucking worries at all. And the three people that do cancel, those three people you're thinking of right now are gonna pop into your head and you're gonna think, well, they're the three most annoying members I have. And we've got caught in that trap before too. I might have to let him go so we can focus on getting getting to a destination. Talk to you later. Hey, I'm Karina from Punch Love Women's Fitness and just wanted to tell you how much we appreciate our fitness business consulting. We've been around for nine years. I'm really lucky to have this business with my absolute bestie, Nick. And we got to that point where we just didn't know what we didn't know. And to be honest, we were struggling with onboarding new clients. And you know, we have that moment where you go, oh my gosh, where is this going? And we reached out to the guys at Fitness Business Consulting and that was eight months ago. And look, they have delivered some really amazing numbers into our business, but probably what's more important is they get us. And they get what punch love is. They understand our philosophy, they understand our culture, they have trained their team to understand that. So they're like an extension of our brand. And when our onboarding team, I say our onboarding team because they are ours, and they could be yours, but they are ours, they communicate what we are about. And that just means that our beautiful members that do join us, they stay with us because from the moment they've had their first interaction, it flows through their entire customer journey with us. So more importantly than sales is actually the way they make our clients feel, the way they make us feel, and on top of that, they are super efficient. So if you're into numbers, just talk to the guys because they are all over it and I love that. And Nick, my bestie, she loves a creative element, but just have a chat. It's a great way to go. We just had lunch with Punch Love Boxing, 242 clients. I'm sure I've said that about 10 times in this video, but I'm gonna keep saying it because it is really, really, really impressive in a nine month period. And while we are incredibly proud of that effort, it is also a massive, massive credit to Nick and Karina, the founders, because they are, well, they are, they are the best operators that we've worked with. Yeah, combined with a great brand, which we were mentioning before, great systems, great processes, which all, all starts in them. So we, we had a, a three hour conversation with them about all things business and the conversation went a lot of different ways, but one we just, the one part that we kept coming back to was their staffing, their systems, their processes, their onboarding, and just how intricate it is and how important it is to be able to have people flow through that sequence who are new to their gym, new to their facilities in a seamless way and onboarded correctly and the result of that is them transitioning into a membership, but then it doesn't stop there. Then the, the retention work begins and having systems and processes and things that are happening on an ongoing basis to make sure that those members are being looked after and they stay for a long, long time. 2009, Lakers versus Orlando, they're up 2-0. Why are smiling? Because Kobe Bryant said the job is not finished. And the truth is the job is never finished. And I feel as though as business owners, entrepreneurs, we think we get to this magical point, this member number, where everything is good and nothing goes wrong ever again. And it couldn't be further from the truth. And the biggest thing we took away from that, that chat, in particular around onboarding, was, was different ways to transition people into a sales. But I think the line that really stuck out in their mind 
is the, the, the sale over the phone is the first sale in a long line of a sale where the onboarding is a sale, retention is a sale. You are constantly selling people to stay into your program, to refer into your program. I think that's lost on members. Because a member joins doesn't mean that you don't need to keep selling them on coming back as fitness. Unlike for it is for us, just isn't a part um, of their life. And I think the biggest thing the girls got from me was just you have to drive belief and conviction into your staff members why your gym is so fucking great. Because what they offer, female boxing only in a beautiful studio, polished concrete floors, velvet <laughs> velvet lounges, one-on-one -on -one technique classes. It's a truly one-of-a-kind experience. And one of their frustrations was um, that the staff sell from their own wallet. And it's something that we've encountered time and time again because your trainer wouldn't pay 75 a week or 100 a week for membership. When someone says to them, oh, like, it's pretty expensive, they actually agree with it. And I told a story of years ago, I got some one-on-one -on -one personal training, two sessions a week, 70 bucks a pop, $140 a week. And I was doing that for, I don't know, 12 months, 18 months, like for, for, a long, for a long while. And as soon as I started paying that, every other group training model, every other group training price that I've ever heard of, and still to this date, has been less than that. And I feel like it is tremendous value. Now, obviously, it is different to, to personal training, but the fact that people are worried about charging $60 a week or $70 a week or, or Lord forbid it'd be 80, 90 or $100 a week for a group training because they feel it's expensive. There's a whole market out there that is paying that much for one hour of a trainer's time. Well, I had a similar experience. I paid James, a good friend of mine now, $127 a week for 12 months. What's that math, mate? Uh, not sure. Six, 6,500 maybe? 6,500 for online coaching. And again, like Mitch, I thought $50 a week to come in three to five times a week to see your friends, to have a shower. Of course it's worth that. And when you actually logically explain what they get in its entirety, it sounds like a bargain because it actually is. I think it's important that people have that perspective on pricing because if, if your main salesperson or any of the people within your business who are doing sales, if they get any sort of hint or any sort of objection about price, from a potential client or a prospect and they go into their shell and they say, oh, no, 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 I totally understand, like it is expensive. And yeah, go home and think about it and talk to your partner about it. The, the sale is as good as lost at that point because you didn't have that conviction, you didn't have that belief that what you are offering for that price point is worth it. And maybe it is on a personal level that you haven't or would never pay that price. And if that is the situation, then it's a, it's a big problem because you cannot bullshit your way into conviction of something you either truly believe or you truly don't, and there's no in-between. So I really believe, for me, inadvertently, all those years ago when I did do that personal training, it really helped me be able to justify these prices and then some with, with group training. I said this before, before I knew anything technically about sales, I just believed to my core that our gyms was the best gym for a person to attend it and hand on my heart, I mean this, Punch Love Fitness is the best concept we've come across the last 18 months, hands down. And I think I even had to remind the founders of how good it is what they offer and why they should be charging more and charging more up front and adding in different services and, and buying boxing gear and buying, buying hand wraps because it is truly a unique prospect. And I say it all the time to our sales teams like, Cocktails are fucking $25. People, people find the money for what they want to do, right? And it's just like, ah, oh, just, it's really, really frustrating because, like, I love fitness to my core. I think everyone should have a membership. And every single person on planet Earth weighs 50 to 70 bucks a week on shit they shouldn't be spending money on. And it just has such a dramatic flow on effect to the profitability of your bottom line because. If you increase the price of your membership and nothing else changes with the fulfillment of that, it is all profitable. If 
you decide to increase your membership by $20 a week and you've got 50 members and nothing else changes and you don't lose a member, that's an extra $1,000 a week that's in your pocket. Like it, it's, it is insane that you can send out one email and say, obviously have it well crafted and say that, hey guys, we're increasing our prices for these reasons and this is effective from, from next week. Next week, you have all these people paying $20 a week more 50 members, $1,000. Even if you have five or 10 of them drop off, you're still $800 or $900 better off. I say it all the time, like, what could you do in life where you can send one email and make $1,000 profit more? Compare that to, say your membership is 40 and you're bumping it to 50. To create $1,000, you need to have 25 more members, which means that you need to probably have 40 paid trials, which means you probably need to generate 200 leads. That doesn't take into account the ad creation, setting up the ads, the follow-up, the sequences, the text, the Twilio's, the sale calls, the no-shows. Increase your fucking prices. Yeah, if there's nothing else, if, if there is nothing else that comes close to being able to, to do that as quickly. But again, it comes back to having belief in, in your service because we, we have this conversation with people and they'll say, yeah, you can see just this uncomfortable look on their face and they're thinking about Sally Smith who, who would kick up a stink about it and, and Bob Jones who, who who wouldn't want to pay it either because they don't truly believe it's worth that much. Otherwise, they would have had it at that price. And this isn't talking about taking, for the most part, from people taking it from $100 a week to $120 a week. It's from taking it... $40 a week to $60 a week or $50 a week to $70 a week. Like it is far, far too cheap. And if you actually break down your business of how many members you need to not only be profitable but to have a healthy business, it is something that is unsustainable. It is not a number that you are able to keep or potentially even reach at these lower membership prices. So just because there are gyms down the road or everyone's favorite franchises that are charging X amount of dollars, it doesn't mean that you are because you don't know how they're doing. There's a reason why all of these gyms are closing down. You wouldn't believe the amount of gyms I talk to that are really struggling, as in like the lease is coming up, the doors are closing, and they have a staggering amount of members, one in particular was a very popular fitness franchise. They had 220 members, but their average membership price was $29, which means that they could have probably 80 members paying 70 and make the exact same amount of profit, combined with not needing that additional 149 members, the spots in sessions, the admin, the cancellations, and everything that goes with it. Not to mention there's no way in hell, I don't care how good your systems are, how good your coaches are, you cannot deliver as top notch of a service to 220 people down to 80 people. Increase your prices. <laughs> do it now. Increase your prices. Start do it writing now. your email. Send it out. Yeah. Do, 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 do with a few few angry people tomorrow. They'll move on. You move on. You'll make an extra 20 grand a year. Well, the tactical thing is we did this, right? And Mitch is a world-class copywriter. And this email is effectively a sales letter. And I remember you emailed out and you put in every single gym in the area of what they were paying. And we were increasing our prices. And at that point, there were still gyms in the areas that were charging more than us. So making your members aware, like, hey, you are getting a red hot price, a red hot deal. We're increasing your price to here, which is just the norm. And then from there, I think we gave them one month notice, their price was going to increase. It's like, please don't discuss this in the gym. Like, this is, this is something that needs to be discussed with us. If you have any concerns, you can't pay the normal amount, give me a call. And at that point, like, you can make the few exceptions if it is going to break someone's bank account. Yeah. And I think for a lot of these consumers or, or your members, they are not in the weeds of the fitness industry like you are. They, they, they don't even know these other gyms that exist, let alone what they what they charge. They don't know that you training on average six people in a session is small group training and some people charge $120 a week for semi-private training for the same thing. You need, you need to educate your members as to 
hey, you know how sometimes you have sessions where there's four people in it? Like that is semi-private training. Like we are not we are not a class of 40 people. You are getting personalized service from qualified trainers combined with the, the raising cost of living, combined with inflation, combined with everything, combined with you probably wanting to start or raise a family or continue to support your family. Can't forget that they actually like you. They yeah. fucking like you. Like they want to support you. You know their family, you know their husband's name, their dog's name, and they know yours too. They want to support you. And if the ones that don't want to support you, they are the members that you go home and complain to your partner about. The ones that make demands in sessions. One of the biggest things today that I was really, really happy with, obviously the 242 members is absolutely epic. How many? But 242. But Good. The most important thing the girls said is like, hey, we really love working with you guys because you guys are an extension of our brand and we trust you with our baby. And something I hear all the time, are you guys going to be sleazy salespeople? What are you guys saying on the phone? And like your brand to us is actually more important than making sales because one sale, two sales, 10 sales, 20 sales over a five year lease means fuck all. So your brand is so critical to us and so important to us. And the argument would be like, oh, well, maybe maybe the ads aren't like as pretty as we'd like them to be. That is not your brand. People wouldn't even know of your brand if they didn't see the ad to start. So let's just start with that. there for a second. But then the, the brand isn't what, what they see in the ad. The, the brand is what they feel when they come in. And if they never have the opportunity to come in, then they have no idea what your brand is or that it even exists. So if you have a generic photo of a group of people working out and you put it as the ad, people aren't even going to realize it's, it's an ad probably. They're, just going to, they're going to keep flicking away because it's just like every other image that they've seen there on Facebook or Instagram. It, do, it doesn't capture any attention. No. So they don't even know you exist. So they don't care about your brand because they don't know about it. That, that's where yeah. our... Some of our text banners, which can be called ugly, which can be called off-brand, they fucking work, they get clicks, they get people yeah. opting into it, and yeah. then it gives us the opportunity to, to convert them into and it's such paying a paying member to start at your gym, so then they can be exposed to your community, can be exposed to your business, can be exposed to your brand, and then start to understand a little bit yeah. more about what you do. It is such a level of arrogance that we see in the fitness industry from young people that are too cool for school that think your brand extends all over Australia and New Zealand when you've got three fucking locations. Like you don't actually have a brand yet. And we have noticed this with our gyms. They're seven Ks apart. They may as well be on different planets. If you want a franchise in its first month of operation in New South Wales versus one in their fourth year in Queensland with an established marketplace, they are not the same fucking thing. And people in fucking Dubbo aren't cheering about the gym up in Cairns. Well, just in our meeting there with the Punch Love ladies, we spoke about three different franchises that we work with, which will remain nameless. And For now. They, and they, they hadn't heard of any of them. I hadn't heard of any of them. And they're, they're in the fucking know. They're, they're in the know. They are actively wanting to, to franchise their business. And they didn't even know of these brands. So what, 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 ch <laughs> what chance that, is it that, that your community just has this <laughs> overarching thought around what your brand is. It, it doesn't exist. Branding is reputation around Coca-Cola, around Tesla, around Facebook, around these huge brands. Not, not about your little independent studio. And, and that it's included with us too. Like we, we do not have a brand that tr transcends the market. People know when they come in and they see us and they experience it and they train with us, they meet the trainers, they meet the members, they come to our events then they know what we're about. It's not from what they see on Facebook the first time that they come across it when they're doom scrolling for 90 minutes every night because they can't go to sleep. Yeah, hang on. I've seen this studio before in other parts of Australia and they use the Monster Art font. These guys are using the Impact font. They mustn't give a fuck about their members. Hang on. They've got a white and black text banner, but their color's blue. Why, why isn't that on brand? I am not clicking there. I'm not signing up there because that is not consistent with their brand identity. And my favorite thing about Nick and Karuna in particular is they've been in the industry for 10 years and they're still fucking pumping. So to put that in perspective, that is longer than F45 have been around in Australia. Longer than F45. And... 
oh, it's, it's probably the, 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 the number one thing that we keep running into where you let your feelings get in the way of what you think should work the best, what you would pay for a membership, how you think people should train. And, and unfortunately, what you think doesn't always correlate to a super profitable business, which is the exact reason you opened it in the first place, to make profit. And you know when your brand's really fucked, when you can't re-sign the lease and you can't pay the bills. And then really think about how, how's much, you hate, then? how much you hate the tech spinner, right? And we say this as, as like people that have owned gyms for nine years, like we wish we were these juggernauts. We wish that people would line up at 3 a.m. in the middle of the winter to get into a 515 class somewhere like for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Not gonna fucking happen. <laughs> and I, where our frustration comes from is like a lot of the stuff that we hear is just absolute straight fucking bullshit because we've lived and breathed this our entire adult life. We thought about going to these, these fitness conventions, but like the, the utter shit that gets spewed out, spewed out on stage would make me so mad, I'd have to yell out and start, I'd have to start booing, bo bo booing in the crowd. I was saying do ones. Yeah. So guys like Nick and Karina, 242 clients, they've converted 203 clients, they've been in the industry for 10 years, and like, they just trusted us to do our thing. Now that, that is a unicorn, that is our best ever client. We absolutely have accounts that we struggle on. There is no certainty, there is, there is no guarantee we have a lot of accounts on that we are super, super successful, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of members. We've actually had five gyms tell us, guys, fucking stop sending us clients. That's true. Is it six now or five? Five, I five, think. five clients, stop sending us clients. So worth a try. Just get out of the way and, and, and let us do our thing. And what I like about Nick and Karina as well, like they've been around for a long time. They, they came to us for help last year because they needed help with acquisition and and that whole process around getting new clients in their gym. They already had a pretty good business. We, we were helping a business that was already pretty good. They, they weren't about to close, like they, they weren't on the brink of bankruptcy, but they, they, are, they are still open to, to these new ideas and to our way because they came to us. We didn't, we didn't go and <laughs> demand that we help these people, help them or reach out to them. They, they wanted help and our system has been able to provide it for them. They, have had conversations with us about we just want to let you guys do your thing. Yeah. So do they think that the ads we run are, are the ads that they would click on? No. They also realize that they are gym owners and the market that we are going after isn't other gym owners. It is people who are wanting to start at a gym and probably an ad that doesn't have a bunch of really fit looking people in it is going to look pretty good to them. So for them, they they have put that aside. They realize that we are not marketing to people like them. We are marketing to people who are good candidates for their facility. That it's an important distinction to make. We hear owners say, yeah, but I wouldn't click on an ad like that. No fucking kidding. Because you own a gym, you wouldn't click on any other gym ad because you would think they're all terrible. I used to think, and I still do see gym ads, and I think I wouldn't click on that because I fucking wouldn't. Because I'm a gym owner, I've got a gym membership. I go to the gym, yeah. I work out, I'm in the industry. I, I, I am immune to that. I'm excluded from that market. So just because you wouldn't click on something, just because you think it looks shitty or you think it looks like a scam or something like it is, it is not the case for the people of the general public. Otherwise, we would not have people opting into the ads, having phone calls with us and starting at your facility. Yeah, they hate the brand so much while they get started. You know what's what's more important than, than your brand? Being fucking open. If you're yeah. not open, what type of brand do you have then? No brand. Delete your Instagram page. Pull your sign down. See how that feels. It's pretty hard to get Mitch fired up, but he, he's in the ad account, seeing these seeing these cost per leads. But not even cost per leads. Like like Karina and Nick are really detail orientated, and we we came we came with facts. It was over 1,200 leads. It was over 240 42 people signed up that we signed up. 28 days at 299, they converted 203, and their CAC was well under $100. It was like 70 bucks. So again, I mentioned before in a previous video that like we had we had, we have other fitness business coaches going at us in regards to our tech spender ads, saying it was, it was something like we don't use those ugly text text based betters, and we just don't talk about leads only. 
either do we, because we don't get paid if we don't sell people. So the cost per acquisition, like, like it's actually like it's almost a, like of course we care about making sales. Like we don't we don't make money if we don't. We the, don't. The only reason we use the text banners is because they work so well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they work so well in getting Gmina's clients. Yeah. Like if if it just so happened that like a really nicely choreographed video worked better, we would be wanting that and using that. But it's not the case. So that's why we use them. I, I don't I don't give a shit what works, just that it does work. And and that's where we we are in partnership with the people that we work with. They want it to work because they get new clients. We want it to work because we make money. We're going to use whatever means necessary to do that. And and these ugly text banners are what works. And if they didn't work, we wouldn't use them. Otherwise, we wouldn't be making any money. We wouldn't be visiting our clients, getting testimonials about how much we've helped them and how many clients we've done. We've done them for eight months. And the petty side of me is like our ads have been ripped off left, right, and center. And I often opt into the ads. You should miss your shop, by the way. I opt into ads and I click through their funnel and I see the A subdomain record gym.fitnessbusinesscompany name. And the same people that rag on our fucking text banners are the same people that have actually ripped our ads and then claim to, to be above us or to do, to do branding or top of funnel or middle of funnel or bottom of funnel. It's just the same shit. And one thing I said to Nick and Karina, because they want to go down the French road, and I said, hey, be yourself, tell your fucking story. You've owned gyms for 10 years longer than F45. We will just fucking tell you the truth. As in top of funnel going. <laughs> yeah, probably not that good. You've got to get awareness in the community. Yeah. You, you, you've got to have people know what you do. Yeah. And then what? You've got to have your brand story. You've got to have your 10 funnel strategy. And then what? And then you, they move to the middle of funnel with a testimonial. Yeah, and they, and they remember the font from the top of funnel, <laughs> translated into the middle of funnel. And, and, then they, get, and they know that that color is consistent with your logo because they, they've taken a screenshot and looked at it on Canva yeah. and determined it's exactly the same. And on the sales call, the objections aren't, I need to think about it. It is like, well, what about that font? What about that font? What about that top of funnel strategy yeah. you guys employ? Yeah. And we, we paid a branding expert. Blue's a trustworthy color, so we're going to use blue. I'm going to spend thousands of dollars on my top of funnel that it's going to get yeah. me nothing back for 12, 12 weeks. And I, and I need money tomorrow. Yeah, they're going to watch videos for three seconds and get retargeted for the next video for 15 seconds, which is a through play. And they get retargeted to, to, to a lead form, which is to book in a call. It's just, ah, like, it, it sounds so great in theory. And like, well, that, that, that is what, yeah. like for, for e-com brands and, and national brands, like that, that's what happens. That, that is how yeah. you go about acquiring clients. And we're, not, we're not saying that's not the case. It's and here's the real thing, mate. If that actually works, that is what we do. Because the truth you, you, is you we, don't, we don't know that? The truth is we don't <laughs> give a fuck about cost per lead. We don't give a fuck about the volume of leads. We care about getting people sold into the gym as, as we work on commission only. So I guess where, where my level of frustration comes from is I feel like a lot of people are getting are getting set up the wrong, is that the expression, set up the wrong tree? Barking up the wrong tree. They're barking up the wrong tree because all of this sounds great in theory. You know what sounds great in theory? Open a gym and people walk in. Not true. It's just, it's just, not, it's just not true. You know what else is great? Being able to pay your bills every month. That's good. Really good. Do you know what sucks? Not being able to pay your bills. Yeah. And we also understand that people open gyms for the wrong for, for different reasons altogether. Some of it is to to be a, a local community here in the community, and I get it, I really do. Some people open up for the lifestyle. Maybe some people are absolutely loaded, and they're having to lose money and just buy themselves buy themselves a job. But the vast, vast, vast majority of people that open gyms are people in their early or late twenties. They've thrown every cent of their savings into it, and it has to work. Not yeah. only that age, mate. We get people in their thirties and their forties. Like it's a, it's a second lease on life, and they, they're using their, their super or, or an inheritance. It, it, it's not. It's not just young people. And if you are someone who isn't really in it to make money, you're in it for lifestyle reasons. Like you're probably not even watching this. You don't even know who we are. Like you, you haven't reached out for help. That's for sure, because you don't give a shit about making money. But for anyone else who's in it to to be able to to do that. Sorry. 
for anyone else who's actually in it so that they can make a good living to be able to have a good life, enjoy their lifestyle, provide for their family, then at times you are needing to to potentially put your your thoughts aside around what you think is best because if, if you're if you're doing what you think is best then you wouldn't need any help. You wouldn't be watching this. You wouldn't have reached out to us. You'd already be doing it. My biggest frustration is when I see franchisees really struggling, like really, really, really struggling, like putting money into the business each month. And I can't even imagine how hard that actually is because we've never, ever been close to being in that position. They're doing things that are on brand. They're following the exact system that they're supposed to follow. It hasn't worked for three years. It's not turning around year four. If anything, it's going to get harder and harder and harder because more gyms are open and you are less important than ever before because you are the 10th gym that opened nine more have opened since then and again we just don't really care about anything else outside of outside of getting results because we, we have been owners and we know it's difficult we know it's tough so guys that was a 27 minute car we hope you guys enjoy this stuff like and it's just i, th I think for me and mitch is just to we told Nick the same thing just be, be truthful state the facts tell the truth be authentic say it exactly how it is and some people will resonate with this and some people will think fuck those guys or we just this is the conversation we would have been having even if the camera wasn't rolling. So we just thought, well, yeah. may, may as well pop it on. And if you sign up with us, like we are going to be super direct, super honest, super transparent. And we hope you are the next unicorn. We hope you are the next punchline boxing. But I will never, ever guarantee you a single thing because that is ridiculous. Well, no, isn't it? Not 100 new members in 90 days or money back? Yeah, I saw an ad once. It was 5 to 50 members in three days. <laughs> Five to fifty. <laughs> yeah, a hundred k in ninety days, or your money back. Or we install this method in the first seven days, or or, or money back. Or we work with you until until we do. Yeah. Imagine if a, a client came up to you and said, "Hey, I want to lose twenty five kilos to get my money back." What would you say? So that's a scam. Well, that's what it actually is. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We got some really cool videos with Nick and Karina today. We're going to share them later on. Um. So yeah. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.